Uh, please uh, about the honourable oh, member for Elmwood uh, Transcona. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I just want to start by informing you that I'm going to be uh, sharing my time with the member from Windsor West. And I want to thank the member from Newmarket Aurora for demonstrating, I think, the kind of fundamental incoherence of the Liberal argument <laughs> when it comes to this bill. So we just heard a speech. We just heard a speech about how Bill C-10 is really about, you know, uh, the competitiveness of the uh, aerospace industry and, and, the, and the airline industry and how it's unfair that competitors of Air Canada are able to move their maintenance work outside of the country. And then on the other hand, he gets up and he says, well, I wouldn't support anything that, uh, you know, I mean, Bill, Bill C-10 is really about jobs in Canada. Well, if, if Bill C-10 was really about keeping jobs in Canada, Madam Speaker, if the argument, the argument they're making is that Air Canada can't be competitive by keeping its jobs in Canada. That's an argument that we in the NDP don't agree with, but that's the argument when they talk about competitiveness, Madam Speaker. So then to get up and say that somehow Bill C-10 isn't really about Air Canada moving those jobs out of the country is incoherent. They want the freedom to move those jobs out of the country so that they can move them out of the country. And, it's, and, and that is the essence of the Liberal argument when they talk about how they're, the Air Canada is apparently getting beat, although there's no uh, news that I've heard that says Air Canada is on the verge of bankruptcy, Madam Speaker. So I thank the member for that. I, I hope Canadians are listening, because if they were, they would see just how at loggerheads the two sides of the Liberal argument really are. They don't go together. They don't dovetail. Actually, they're in contradiction, Madam Speaker. That's been the story of this bill. Another contradiction that has to do with this bill is on the timeline for the bill, Madam Speaker, because we hear insistence from the Minister that there is no deal, that Bill C-10 is not connected in any way to a purchase of jets for Bombardier by Air Canada, and yet it has been a priority of this government to rush this bill through the House. If there's no deal, how can it be, Madam Speaker, that there's a timeline for getting the bill through? There's no demonstrated need that Air Canada needs this to happen right away. The only way they could need it to happen right away, Madam Speaker, is if they already had plans to move the jobs out of the country, the ones they haven't already moved out of the country. And incidentally, the member from New Market Aurora was, was wrong to say that Air Canada hasn't moved any of its maintenance jobs out of the country. In fact, it did in 2012. The member for Winnipeg North understood that well when he was in opposition. The Prime Minister understood that well when they were in opposition. The people who were taking Air Canada to court to get those jobs back understood it well, Madam Speaker, and what's wrong with this bill is that it eliminates any legal basis for challenging Air Canada now and into the future. It may well be that the Quebec government dropped its suit, Madam Speaker, but there are others who are prepared to take Air Canada back to court in order to win those jobs back to Canada, Madam Speaker, and after Bill C-10 passes, they won't be able to do that, Madam Speaker. They won't be able to do the very thing that the member for Winnipeg North and the Prime Minister were calling on the last government to do, which was enforce the Act. Enforce the Act, Madam Speaker. Well, now they're in government, not only are they not enforcing the Act, but they're changing the Act, Madam Speaker. And it's reprehensible because it means that citizens in Canada who want to take Air Canada to court to enforce that very same Act won't be able to because the Act will be changed, Madam Speaker. And that's the shame of C-10. What we've learned from this whole process, I think, Madam Speaker, are a few things about the character of the government. I, why I think C-10 is so telling in terms of the character of the government, there are a number of reasons. But it's, it's kind of unique in that it was the first bill that the government brought that wasn't a routine motion or a direct consequence of an election commitment. So C-10 was really a preview of this Liberal government's mind, we'll Madam Speaker, and what they do when they're not handcuffed by election commitments. And so the first thing that they did was something that, A, goes totally against what they were campaigning for in opposition, which was enforcement of an act. They decided to change the act to take out the provisions that they said needed to be enforced. I don't see how anyone can think that that's consistent from, when, from, from, uh, from, from one moment to another, Madam Speaker. So I think there's a bit of hypocrisy, frankly. Uh, and so that's, that's interesting to note about the government. It's interesting to note that Western Canada in all of this was an afterthought because despite the protestations of the minister, it's hard not to believe that part of this was really about finding a deal for Bombardier. And instead of saying, we need to do that in a responsible way, we need to do that in a way that doesn't play the maintenance sector off the production sector. 
Instead of doing that in a way that doesn't play regions of the country off against each other, we're just going to go cut a deal with our friends, our big corporate friends, and we'll, you know, we'll sort the rest out later. And if it just so happens that a major uh, part of the Winnipeg aerospace industry, we can't, we can't get that back because the law has changed, well, so be it. Because Hang Winnipeg's not really on our mind, Western Canada is not really on our mind. So I found that very interesting. I found it interesting, and I think we learned from that, Madam Speaker, it's not just about regions, it's not just about the lack of strategy when it comes to the aerospace industry, it's not just about their willingness to engage in hypocrisy, but it's also about big corporate friends getting one set of rules, Madam Speaker, and another set of rules for everyone else. So if you're a worker, if you're an Air Canada worker, if you used to work for Air Canada and you were counting on that lawsuit to go through and you were looking forward to someone else taking up the charge after the Quebec government let that lawsuit go, well, too bad for you. We're actually getting rid of those rules. The rules that protect you, we're getting rid of. And we're bringing in a new set of rules, a set of rules that are going to be good for Air Canada execs and Air Canada shareholders. And if that means we're selling out Canadian workers, well, now we're in government. Too bad. We care about them in opposition because, because we want their votes. But once we're in government, we've got better friends, Madam Speaker. That's the message of C-10. And shame, shame on them for that. Shame. And Canadians ought to remember that at the next election, far away though it may be. So I think we learned a lot about the government in this whole process, Madam Speaker. Um, and I think it's important to articulate those lessons. Uh, <laughs> we saw in all of this, Madam Speaker, incidentally, just in terms of getting a little bit of insight or a premonition, there's now, I think, an established pattern of not having a lot of respect for Parliament when it comes to this government. It was Absolutely. actually C-10 where we saw it first. The first time allocation was moved on C-10. At the time, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out because I was listening to the Liberal government saying, we have a lot of respect for Parliament. Parliament's a great place. We want to hear from parliamentarians. We still hear some rhetoric to that effect, although it's harder to believe because, like they say, we too are interested in evidence, an evidence-based decision-making. If you're going to make a decision about what to believe about the Liberals, Madam Speaker, and you look at the evidence in terms of what they've done, it is very hard indeed to believe their claims about respect for Parliament. That started with C-10. It was a mystery then because I wanted to take them at their word. I really did. And, and there wasn't any deal. There wasn't a deal for the purchase of Bombardier jets. There wasn't there wasn't, there wasn't a deal at all about this legislation, so there was really no need to push it forward. So it was genuinely mystifying. I think as time has gone on and we've seen the lack of respect that this government has for Parliament, we've heard from witnesses on C-10 also skating around the issue of whether or not there was a deal between the government, perhaps, Air Canada perhaps, Bombardier perhaps. We're not quite sure because no one from the government will enlighten us, but it, it's hard to believe there's no deal at all. Moving time allocation on C-10 at every stage begins to make a little bit more sense, Madam Speaker. In question period today and in other days, we've heard the Minister of Democratic Institutions say that one of the great things about their process for a new voting system is that every member is going to have a say. Every member is going to have a vote. Every We're member all going to get up. Cabinet. We're all going to get up, and after the Liberal Majority Committee makes a recommendation to the Liberal Cabinet, which comes back with legislation that's going to be dealt with by a Liberal Majority, everyone's going to have their say on a new voting system, matters, Madam Speaker, as if, as if their majority didn't make a difference, or as if they were comfortable with the idea that if their majority didn't make a difference, that would be okay. Again, C-10 is instructive, Madam Speaker. Because it was only the last Monday that we sat, not this past Monday, but the Monday before, that C-10 came to a vote on report stage. And you know what, Madam Speaker? Because the member from Assiniboia Headingley, uh, St. James Charleswood Assiniboia Headingley, changed his vote, we, we, had a, we had a tie vote. He had voted against it at second reading and then voted for it at report Shameful. stage. And that came down to a tie. And we got to see in that tie on C-10 what the government is really like if if every member does have a say, and not all their members show up mm -hmm. because they don't think it's important, or I don't know, I won't, I won't presume to say why they weren't there, but the results of the tie were clear. The government didn't say, that's great, Parliament's spoken, and had we had one vote less, that would be fine. Instead, they lost their temper, Madam Speaker. They brought forward a motion that was completely draconian, would have handcuffed Parliament, and 
and, uh, and as I say, created a climate where people were prone to losing their temper. So I think we saw another insight into the real mind of the Liberal government through C10. Comments, uh, questions et commentaires, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker. And, you know, I find it uh, most interesting, uh, coming from the member from Elmwood, if he were to, to reflect on Premier Greg, or the former Premier, Greg Selinger, uh, a Premier in which his father served under. Uh, that particular Premier uh, had clearly indicated that this was a, a good thing for the province of Manitoba. Uh, based on what he is saying, am I to believe that uh, the former Premier, Greg Selinger, was wrong in his assessment as the NDP Premier of Manitoba? He felt that, uh, yes, it's sad that we lost these good paying jobs from the past, but the, he saw that the, the future was going to be good for the province, that in fact this settlement that has been, been talked about, and he had put in uh, many weeks into that particular settlement, that the, the, premier, the former Premier, uh, NDP uh, Greg Salinger, was wrong in his assessment. If we want to take a look at the long term, does he not agree that we should be putting our emphasis on protecting Winnipeg's long term and Manitoba's long term interests in the aerospace industry? The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona. I thank the member for the question. We sometimes say that in the House, Madam Speaker. We don't really mean it. I want, I want to let you know I really thank him for that question because it allows me to set something straight. It's true that the Manitoba government, the previous Manitoba government, had said that they were pleased with that arrangement in the new circumstances, Madam Speaker. And what he fails to mention is that when the federal government changed and then you had a government that was going out there and insinuating that they were prepared to change the Air Canada Act because there were rumours to that effect a long time before C-10 was tabled. It fundamentally changed the negotiating position of the provinces with respect to Air Canada. Knowing that they no longer had a federal government that was going to uh, continue the act in its current form and that there wouldn't be a legal basis for challenge fundamentally changes the negotiating position of provincial government. So yeah, in the new circumstance, with a federal Liberal government that was selling out aerospace workers, the NDP got the best deal they could for Manitobans. Questions and comments? 